Merry Christmas to you all. You're welcome to the house of God. This is Apostolic Faith, um, located at number 13, Penn Hill Road. We're happy to have you around with us today, and we pray that as um, you're part of what the Lord is going to do today, you will not go without the blessing of God. Um, God will bless you greatly before you go. So we want to appreciate God for being in our midst. Um, he has taught us in the Sunday school this morning. And um, then what you've just heard is um, the choir singing God's choir. And before that, we had an organ prelude um, and a piano, actually, by Brother Mike and Brother Godwin. It's our turn now to sing unto God, and we want to sing joyfully as we open our hymn books to CGS number 24, which is Praise the King of Glory. Sister Emma is our song's leader. God bless you.
Hosanna. Amen. Hosanna. to praise God. Angels from the realms of glory. Amen. Him, CGS 37. Let's sing verses 1, 3, and 4. 1, 3, 4.
as he's born and went up, he's coming back. Yes. Are we expecting him? Yes. 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 Three, five, eight. Him, three, five, eight. Jesus is coming with joy to the sky. Let's sing verses one, uh, two, and four. One, two, and four. Please, let's stand to sing the last verse. After that, we'll be led in prayer. in prayer, Brian Sikak will come forward to lead us in congregational prayer. Gracious and most heavenly Father, Amen. we bless your name this morning. Yes. We thank you for yet another privilege to be in your presence yes. where there is fullness of joy. Yeah. We can see and we can feel the joy around us. Thank you, Lord. Lord, it's because of your goodness. Yes. It's because of your faithfulness. Yeah. You've been the one that have kept us right from the inception of the year yeah. up to this very moment. Yes. For these, oh Lord, we are grateful. Amen. Oh Lord, receive our thanks. Amen. We thank you for your mercies, your provision, yes. your protection. Oh, yes. Lord, even for your word. Yes. Lord, glory be unto your name. Amen. We know you are the reason of this season. Yes. Lord, we give you thanks Amen. for you are the soon coming king. Yes. But we give you special thanks Amen. because you can be born in our hearts yes. even today. Yes. Lord, as we come before you, O oh God, our hearts are open. We commit the preacher into your mighty hand. Amen. We pray that the word today that will come forth will meet us, will meet each and every one of us Amen. at our point of need. Amen. Lord, we pray that you bless the altar service, Amen. that as we call upon you, you give us that joy which the angel announced. Amen. Joy to the world, yes. for the Lord is come. Yes. Let X receive our king. Yes. Lord, we are prepared today. Lord, come and open our hearts. Yes. Bless us, Amen. that we might be a blessing Amen. to our families, Amen. to the nation, Amen. to many generations, Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, we want to welcome everyone to our service this morning. I want to believe that um, you've been enjoying the service thus far. 
the Lord is here to bless us and that he will do. Our Christmas concert we hold here. Um, and I know we are all looking forward to that. I'm sure it's going to be a time of blessing. The invite is still available with the ushers. So um, if you have neighbors, friends, and colleagues at work that you still want to invite, please pick as many copies as you want up. taken from Psalm 37 verses 23 to 25. Psalm 37 verse 23 to 25. 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his way. 24. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholded him with his hand. 25 the last verse. I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Amen. Yeah. My stubborn will at last had yielded. I will be done and die. Bring it. 
precious will Oh concrete Savior Doth now embrace and compass me Oh discourse hushed my peace chapter 12 and I will read verse 2 and now behold the king walketh before you and I am old and grey headed and behold my sons are with you And I have walked before you from my childhood unto this day. Um, Samuel here was giving a farewell speech of his, com of, of his commitment to the call of God. Um, so I want to speak briefly about commitments this morning. Commitment is a, a personal endeavor. It's a, it's a personal calling. It's a personal projection. It's a personal attitude. It's something personal to you and how you respond to it. Whether it is in the workplace, you will be promoted because of how committed you are to the work. If you are committed to the work, many eyes will see, even your boss will see, others will know. If you, are play, if you want to play tricks, many eyes will see and they will know as well. So also with our service to God, if we are not committed to it, we stand very far away from him. Samuel here was brought up in a very unusual environment where he really did not have a good role model. No. But um, he was committed to the call of God True. to his life. And he allowed that call to sink deep, 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 deep into his heart, that nothing else could take precedence over that call. 
If you remember that um, Samuel was with the children of Eli, who were tamed as Belial, the children who were deceitful, children who used tricks, children who were able to discourage people that were coming to worship in the congregation, children who took the portions of the meat that were not meant for them, children who totally disregarded God and all that appertained to God. He grew up there. But inside, deep down in the heart of Samuel, he knew that he had a different calling. Amen. He followed it. Amen. When they say different calling, he was a righteous call. Yeah. And none of us will say that we have not had opportunity for righteous calling in our lives. We all have, and that is the reason why we are here. Right. Every one of us have that, that pointing finger of righteous call to make us better mold, better human being. But the ultimate is how are we committed to that call? If we give a shadow response to that call, or shallow response to that call, our commitment will be shallow, and we become losers. So God wants to remind us that our, his calling to us is for us to be committed to it. When, when I was in school, and uh, when we interviewed um, um, teachers, I remember my head, my deputy head on my head, even though the people were to work in my department, what we were looking for, because our children were not those that were flamboyant. We were not in Cambridge or Oxford. We were just a typical inner city school. But what we were looking for were this simple statement of allegiance to the school by the candidates. Simple statement of commitment. When we're reading through the application, when we when we are when we're reading through the application, we have to see something that says this person will be committed right. to what we ask, what we stand for. And we, we want to see, okay, you may be committed to equal opportunities, you may be committed to this, you may be committed to that, but are you committed? We, we, would this person be committed to our school knowing very well that we were um, like a 75% free school meal school? When I say 75%, that means those children that can eat free. And then you understand the background of that means that they, they are, are hugely from a disadvantaged family. So when these candidates would turn up, my head teacher, was, my deputy would say, I don't think we should appoint this one, even though he's very clever, he's very bright. That person doesn't make any statement, has not shown any commitment to what we are trying to do here. I think we should appoint that one. I'll go by it. So yes, let's go for that. And truly, truly, truly so, everyone that we appointed on the basis that they have made commitments, we, we will see, it will come through. It will come through in the trust of everything. It will come through who is really committed. You know, be, be, between you and I, God sits down in heaven and looks down. God sits up in heaven and looks down. It goes through. It, it goes through how committed we are to God. Because God makes the ultimate assessment of us. God makes the ultimate assessment of us. So this was Samuel showing commitment right from his youth. And let, let, let's, let's put this in perspective. God will never ask us to be committed for more than which we can perform because that will be beyond our boundaries. However, the little things does count. Yeah, do. And it starts from the little things before he builds up. Then you have a crescendo that moves God's hand into blessing the individual. You see, for the church to be committed, the individuals have to be committed. Yeah. It, cannot, it cannot be one person committed and then everyone uncommitted. So here, Samuel was telling them, look, this is my farewell speech. Whatever you can make out of that, this is me. 
and the first basic, the very basic that requirement for our commitment to God is salvation. Yes. yes. If you if you are not saved, everything else that we say is going to be, you know, it, it will it will rebound him back to us. The those who preach, those who teach, those who sing, it, it will be rebounding back to us because. You, you yourself, you are like a chicken. And then when we pour water at the back of the chicken, it does like that, it's all over. It doesn't stay. But if you are saved, then it begins to make some meaning right. in your life. Honestly, it's not rocket science. That's true. If you can't, if, if you're not saved, everything else that we say is counterproductive. To be saved is that ultimate surrender to God. Yes. To be saved is that ultimate listening and doing the will of God. Right. You know, you may not like it the way it is. You may not like it the way you are told. But once you are saved, you and God will be speaking the same language. Amen. And God cannot speak the same language to you that is different from the majority of what he's speaking to the majority. So you're not going to tell me that this is what God is saying to me and you box yourself into a corner and say this is my comfort zone with God. It doesn't happen like that. The, 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 the world will see. You cannot light a candle and then put a, 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 a bushel into it and then feel that it will light. No, it doesn't work like that. I mean, you can go to, you can become the professor of theology and you can become uh, the doctor or the dean of theology and come back and tell me. But I believe in the basic. Amen. It is the fundamentals that makes it happen. And those fundamentals are, are made manifest when we come in like this. The very, very basic thing, if, you, if, you, if we are singing and you're not singing, mm -hmm. you're not committed. It's just simple. That's right. It's just, just so simple. That's right. If you are singing, it's, I'm, I'm preaching. If I'm here, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just miming my mouth. Yeah. You're not understanding what I'm saying. You can't sing and your neighbors don't hear. And I sing it with, I start, I start with bra, 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 I can hear him. I hear him sing, 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 sing. He inspires me and I sing, 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 sing. Yes. And everyone can hear. And then revival comes. Amen. If we come to church and we are not committed to the basic thing of singing, where is, where is the starting point? It just, it just makes me wonder, how can someone sit down in a, a vibrant church and don't sing? I don't get it. It's not, there's no commitment because you're not committed. It's just so simple, man. It just says, I don't see any other way of expressing it. God bless you. God bless you. One of my technicians, when I was in school, would come to the, to the class and I would see some people coming into the class. They're following a child that has learning difficulty. And then they decide to sit with that child alone. And then the whole the rest of the class needing help is sitting with that child. My, my technician will come and then he will shut that one out, shut that one out, shut that one out. They say, this person cannot be so passive in a very active environment. Mm. You can't just come and sit down with one child if you really have the interest of other children in you. So, so and then when we are praying, it's very basic commitment. You close your eyes. You know, it's not like when we were in school and we do like that. No, we don't do that. Everybody closes eyes like that. You see, when you close your eyes, you listen to the prayers. Right. It's, it's commitment. Yes. If you do not close your eyes, you are basically listening to something else because you are being distracted. God, don't, God doesn't put these things in place because... He, he hates us. He wants us to do something wrong. No, if God puts things in place to bless us, Amen. to bless our souls, to make us happy people. So when God, uh, so when we are praying, every we are not. So this is apostolic faith church. Yes. We are not Roman Catholic. God, I'm just sorry to mention the name. We are not other churches. You are not. If you don't do that, no one is going to come to you and say, "Ah, you didn't close your eyes. You you just stand the way you like." Just close your eyes. Once you close your eyes, the angels of God will come and tune your ears Amen. to the prayer. Amen. And when the angels of the Lord tunes your ears, to, 
Try it and see, my brother and sister. The way, when we pray next time, close your eyes. Just focus on the, on the prayer. You will see, you will hear the things you have never heard Amen. in that prayer. Amen. Because there are strands of that prayer that is coming out and it's for you. Amen. And it's for your blessing. Amen. And because you have closed your eyes, basic commitment. Because you have closed your eyes, then the preacher, the, the prayer, the person that is praying is praying. You would then be able to say, Amen. Yeah. If you don't close your eyes, your telephone will, will begin to attract you. What, what the next person is doing in front of you will begin to attract your attention, and you are disconcerted already. It's a just, they are just basic, they're not rocket science. They are proven Christian techniques for our spiritual growth. Amen. 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 So, 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 um, so that, that is basic commitment for us. And I can imagine um, Samuel, when he was growing up in this very difficult environment, I can see him singing heartily. I can imagine him singing very juicily. I can see him when they were saying in the synagogue, when they were reading, and he will, he will be the first. To, to, when the Sunday school teacher is teaching, he's asking people to read. And then there's so many people that are not lifting up their, their hands. And then he will be begging people. He will be naming names. Whereas, uh, you know, a good teacher, you, you enjoy yourself when you are teaching and your students are doing that, they, right. that, 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 like, that like, yes, because you want people to participate. Yeah. So that, that, that is, is basic commitment. Yeah. Because then you, it means that you are listening to the Sunday school yeah. and you are being part and parcel of what is going on. Yeah. So that then it engineers some thoughts in your heart yeah. to be able to bring out those thoughts for the benefit and the sharing of others. Yeah. So, so commitment to God are these basic principles that make us mature, growing Christians. Amen. Amen. So you can imagine if Samuel was behaving like the children. I can, I can imagine um, Hovni standing this side, Finney has standing this side, children of Israel, so children of Eli. I can imagine Samuel in the middle, closing his eyes. I can imagine this one chatting and cheat and, 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 and then uh, laughing his head off. I can imagine this one touching somebody. I can imagine that. And Samuel said he has a commitment. Amen. Commitment to follow God. Yes. And commitment brings steadfastness. Right. Do you know that listening to the word of God is part of our commitment here? And, you know, no one is going to know whether you are listening. Only God knows if you are listening. If you don't listen, you are not going to be able to pray. It's basic. At the end of the sermon, you'll be wondering, what was he talking about? Uh, which one which one pertains to me? Which one was for other people? Because you didn't pay attention. But if you pay attention to the message, there will be one thing. One thing that will break you down. Yeah. There will be one thing that will make you go on your knees. Yeah. And then because we throw that one thing, you will do a self-examination of yourself mm -hmm. and go and pray. Yeah. We don't cry because we want to cry. No, no one purpose to come from home and no. cry. No, you don't sit out at home to say, when I get to church today, I will cry. No, yeah. we cry because the word of God has touched our heart. Yeah. And that is, that is, that is basic. That is basic. You see, you see big men, adults, old men like me crying. It's because the word of God has broken me down. Yes. I mean, I don't understand why you can't cry. So, 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 because commitment is first yourself and then to God. Then once you settle that between you and God, you can be committed to other people. Somebody didn't do it so that others can see and give him praises. No, it's a self-examination. It's a self-duty. It's self-imposed. Psalm 37. I read verse 25. I have been young, and now I'm old, 
yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. David didn't just rise up that day. It is because David was committed to God. Yeah. If you read the whole of that psalm, you will see all that David was talking about. But first thing is that, you see, when I was growing up, I was always thinking that church was for the elderly people. I made so many postponements in my teenage age. Oh yeah, when, I, when I'm old. I will save God. But you know, God called me in my early 20s. And since that journey started, I have no reason to regret. I, I could have, I could have, it could have been something, I could have been something else now. And that something else, <laughs> I, I could not, I wouldn't rule out imprisonment. Because I, I, I know how I, I wanted to shape my life. And I, I remember when I arrived here as a young man in the college, the first thing that I saw, oh, I forced the, the letterhead of the college. You know how stupid I was? I used it to write. I wanted to write to my friends back home. It's not like I, I wanted to defraud the bank, no. I just took the letterhead, put it in the, in the, in the what do you call it, in a photocopier, and just deleted everything and so only the letterhead was left. So I just used it now to write some letters home to show that I was in the college in London. You know, I was so stupid, I gave it to the receptionist of the college to photocopy for me, and therefore I couldn't have myself. So I, I know but those little things would have led me into a, a, the lands of the unknown and unthinkable. But in, that lit, in, in those early age, God called me. So, so when God then called me, I enjoyed the gospel. There was, there was no need to say until I become gray-headed. No. It was, there, was, there, was, no there was no need again to just follow on, follow on, follow on, follow on. And whatever was done, I, I had no reason to say, oh, it's him, it's her. It's my church. This is my church. Look, man, I have been suspended before for an unusual, and what did I do? I took medication because my children were very sick and I was, I was suspended. Because I said, okay, that's fine. But this is my church. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't come around and say, how dare you did it? How dare you? No, this is my church. This, I, just, I, just, I just, okay, that's what my church says. I just move on and life moves on. Have I regretted? No, no regret. Because even, even when our leaders made mistakes, God is greater than our leaders. Amen. And God comes down to correct those mistakes. Yes. And then we move on. There's no point anybody sitting down about things that happened over 20 years ago. It doesn't make sense. There's no, 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 no need somebody sitting down about things that even if it is now, our, our leaders make mistakes. Yes. Please, pray for them. Amen. Eh? Pray for them. Don't, don't just pray for them that God will correct the mistake. That don't, there is no need to start having a jibaji and then and this and that. No, because if you are committed to God and your church, then you will not have any antipathy against somebody else. God bless you. God bless you. And then, then you, even if there are issues like Samuel said, God, you know, go, go down. Have a, you can go and chat with him. Go and chat with her. You, the leadership is not just male. You can go and chat with a female leader. Someone that's within the choir, choir member, I remember one of uh, the ministers pulling me out to one side and said, I did this happen, that happened, that happened, and I wanted this happen, I wanted it that way. Well, it's, love, it's up to the individual. So we just, this, you, we just see how the individual will make it to happen. So um, commitment is a personal affair. Until now, uh, you know, once I was young, but now I am old. Yes. Some of, I mean, last, last week, what, did we pre what was he preaching about? I mean, it was about don't let anyone defy your, your youth. Yeah. It was about that. It, I mean, even when I wasn't saved, I, 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 did, I, 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 I grew, I, I decided that I would not allow anyone to make me miserable. I would not allow anyone to make me miserable. Yeah. When people would curse me, I wasn't saved. Don't, 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 take, don't, don't, uh, don't think I was saved. I wasn't saved. 
when they will cast me, I will take it patiently, take it patiently, take it patiently. And then one day, I will have the greatest curse and curse him. And when I curse that person, he will be coming back to beg, 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 beg. Oh, don't, let's, let's not do the game again. I said, no, you started it. Because I don't want him to make me miserable. I don't want her to make me miserable. So in that way, I will, I will, I will explode. But thank God, when I didn't join Christian, when, when God, after God saved my soul, it all changed. Amen. You can curse to, from now to tomorrow. That's your problem. Because I know there's someone else that is watching yes. over me. It's because yes. it's commit, I, I have to have commitment. Most of us stay in the gospel because we are committed to That's it. Right. You see, you know, if, if, right. if commitment is taken away, we are finished. Yeah. And imagine if Samuel was not committed. His life would have been different. Yeah. We will not read about him in the Bible now as one of those wonderful prophets of God. Mm. And he didn't want to do the things the way others were doing it. David also here, when he says he was young and now he's old. So um, he's talking, David was talking here in his old age. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Because he can look back from when he was that little child going into the hills with, with, uh, with animals, being a shepherd and sitting down and playing his harps. He, now, how, how could you, you know, put one to one? How can you mathematically calculate that a shepherd will become a king? This is, you know, for human, in, in our human calculation, is virtually impossible. That's right. But it was possible for David. Yeah. So now he can look back and say, ah, ah, how did it happen? I wasn't born into a royal family. It was not an, an inheritance. It was not hereditary. No. So how could it happen? But it did happen. Yes. And today it does happen. Yes. When, when you see the people that God has appointed into positions, for them it was not a mark right from the womb no. when, they were, when they are born. He, they, they're not a Jeremiah that from the womb. God said he knew him. No. And God they said he appointed him. No. And our people have a say that the belly, eh, when a woman is pregnant, the one that is going to bring her the king does not have to go to the, to the floor. So that he, oh, he, he say that one, that, that, that pregnancy is going to be a belly, is, is in the, is, he got that to the floor. No, it can be a tiny little one like this, but when the king comes out, everyone will know. So, 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 so I, 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 David was here, not... Uh, um, expecting anything, honestly, anything in life. But God saw him, uh, a man after his own heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that man after God's own heart was because of God saw there would be commitment in him. Yeah. And God saw the same thing in Jacob. He saw I hate, but Jacob I love. Mm. And so so God, God sees those commitments. Yeah. And I mean, sometimes... We think of, um, uh, oh, our commitment must start from on high. No, it doesn't start like that. Right. Oh, I have to be appointed to, to be a minister. Oh, I have to be appointed to be the leader. I have, I have to be appointed to be overseer. We don't do hate hunting. No, no we don't do hate hunting. Our, our church promotes from within. Yeah. Well, so this, this pulpit, by the grace of God, you're not going to see this high prophet coming from outside to preach to you. No. It, it, this is what God has given to us. Yeah. No matter how, how dumb we are, God is still using us. Yeah. No matter how bright we are, God is still using us. Yeah. It's because of commitment. Yeah. So it's not going to be today. Oh, uh, prophet this is coming. Tomorrow, uh, uh, prophet this, that is coming. And then you will have your eyes and you look. You look at the appearance. And then you say, how come? And uh, how come is, is that one a prophet or prophet is or, or this? How come? And we, we, you're not going to have the one that drives in here in Rolls Royce and then accompanied by talks. No. Someone told me about someone that visited a, um, um, and preached. Uh, in the church, as soon as that person stood up, everyone was queuing up to go and sit in his seat. We don't have that here. No. We want to go to camp meeting. Yeah. Our general overseer, the Pope of Apostolic Faith Church, will come. We just announce it just gently and yeah. say, oh, 
this um, Reverend uh, uh, Darely is coming. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Yeah. If you put his name in newspaper and begin to uh, and, uh, broadcast, you, you'll be surprised. In the 90s, when I think it was 1994 to be precise, when uh, Dwight was the, uh, the overseer, uh, he came to visit us here in London. And, and uh, we have taken, we use our African mentality. We took our children away from school so that when we go to the, so that we go to the airport and greet, and greet them. So we, we, we went to the, we, God, God loves us, you know. We, we, by the time we, we, we reached the airport, we wanted to do, and uh, we, we, we went to the airport, we missed him. Thank God the man had, checked, the man, the man had arrived and, and went into his uh, mini car. Mini car took him to the hotel. So when we arrived with our flags and banners in African mentality, they wouldn't see him. And then we, we took him to the church. As soon as he walked to the church, we saw the children lining up because we were singing. What are they doing there? Was his first question. I said, why, why are they not in school? And then imagine if we had met him at the airport, and then we, we begin to, and then maybe the police would have come to arrest us. So, so we, don't, we, don't, we don't go, I'm, I'm trying to bring a context into, into the fact of promotion. We just have very humble, very, very, very human, down to eight human being, and, and, and they just do, they, 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 they teach us the word of God. We accept it as it is, and we just move on as it is, because it's something of the spirit. Yes. If you don't have commitment to the spirit of God, you're not going to grow spiritually. It's as simple as that. We're not going to go and, and say, oh, because that one has reached, this is the prophet of theology. Come and be our leader. It doesn't work like that. But if you have that small, simple, basic commitment to God, God sees you Amen. and you begin. Commitment doesn't mean coming to church Sunday to Sunday and sitting down. It means when the when job is announced, you are there. Yeah. You know, uh, when, 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 when prayer meeting is announced, you are there. There may be circumstances that takes you away from it, but that circumstances God will understand. Yeah. You know, if... It, 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 the circumstances does not start at the beginning. You have to be committed first. And God will see that that commitment is there with you. If the circumstances happen, that you cannot attain all of these services, that you cannot do this, God then intervenes. Then the, you know, prayer is like, prayer is investment. Yeah, it, is. it is investment. Yeah. So when you pray, today, pray, it went like, Next month is going to come by the grace of God, and we will call for prayer for maybe one month throughout fasting and praying. And then you turn, then you don't turn up. You have not bottled up for the year. If something happens, where is despair? The, those prayers that we announce here and there are to give us some spare parts yeah. to, to store so that in times of need, it comes out because you have been committed to saving. If you're not committed to saving, then you're not going to reap the interest. So, so, so all these things, Samuel was demonstrating it as commitment. And then when he, when, when he stands in front of others and asks them to array him, you know, to, you know, search me. Search it was, in today's terms, in the social media, you call it review. Uh, uh, you, you independently being reviewed by the people that you save or maybe your customers. Uh, I mean, you may want to use maybe, uh, there, there's this thing that they call uh, Twitter. And then, uh, sorry, sometimes you, I, can't, I can't believe why people want to go on something that they cannot resist themselves. It might not be something that you as a child of God immediately wants to go into. Because for me, I, I, I get, okay, what about if I say this and the other one says that? If, if I do this and the other one does that, I have already sold myself to the world. So I'm going to feel, I'm going to get a barrage of comments that I don't like. A barrage of comments that are, are, are irreputable. And so I keep myself away. And then I don't get into it. But I, when, when you purposely get into it, and then when it does come, 
you can't handle it. Right. You suffer emotional attack. Right. You suffer uh, uh, brain mental attack. You suffer all kinds of all kinds of problems that you yourself can't cope with it because you wanted to do it. It's, it's, it, 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 it. You don't show commitment to even yourself. You're not. You're not. You, you're, you're not helping the situation by staying away in the first place. When I was in school, I. What, why, why, why was I asked many times by children to solve the problem that was at home? Every time, oh, this one said this on the internet to me. That was, I went, so why is it here? Take it back home. Let your parents go and deal with it. Why is it coming to school? I didn't get it at all. But we still have to try and resolve it for them. So commitment to God is individual and personal calling that you yourself, you will experience, you will know who God is between you and God, and then human beings will know. People will know. Because as an organization, we have a, a, an objective, and we are committed to that objective. Yes, and if we don't, if, we, if we are not committed to that objective, then we will be a failure. Hmm. But thanks be to God Amen. that he doesn't hide these things from us. Yeah. Commitment comes with vision. If you read, if you, if we, we, we're dealing with 1 Samuel chapter 12. Um, if we read the, that 1 Samuel chapter 11, you will see that um, in, verse, uh, in, verse, in verse 15, Samuel, everyone was, because Saul, at this point in time, in that 1 Samuel chapter 11, Saul the future children of Israel were being oppressed by the Amorites. And Saul, when he took power, had come and he took a bullock and slaughtered it and tell them to take the bullock and go to each territory in Israel to announce that anybody that does not come to war against the children of Amorites is going to be slaughtered like this bullock. So he had, on his call, he had over 3,000 strong men that came out to war. It's after now the, 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 the war against the Amor, and then Saul was the first king. This was his first victory recorded. So he took them to war against the Amorites. And now after that, everybody wanted to worship God. And Samuel told them, wait, wait, wait. First Samuel chapter 11. So Samuel told them, that's not where we want to go. Let's read verse 15. Okay, from verse 13. And Saul said, There shall not a man be put to death this day, for today the Lord had wrought salvation in Israel. This is after Saul has won the war. You remember when he became king, that the children of Belial were against Saul. So now everyone said, This our king has rescued us from the Amorites. Let us kill the children of Belial. Saul said, No. And then Samuel said, Verse 14, then Samuel said to the people, come and let us go to Gilgal and renew the kingdom there. Amen. You know, he didn't want war. He said, okay, you've seen it. You've had your king. Let's go and coronate him. And then this coronation was to draw people's heart to God. So every, every leader, all, all of us must have commitment to peace, commitment to progress, commitment to pointing people out to where God is, who God is. And in verse 15, and all the people went to Gilgal, and there they met Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. And there they sacrificed sacrifices of peace offering before the Lord. And there Saul and all the men of Israel rejoiced greatly. That was Samuel's commitment to peace. He, did, he didn't want anything that would trouble his people. And I want to bring this um, to a close, but Samuel had already... Um, Close it for us in verse 23 of 1 Samuel chapter 12. Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord Amen. in ceasing to pray for you, but I will teach you the good and the right way. Moreover, as for me, May God help me not to sin by not praying for you. 
I want to believe it's the same for you. Moreover, as for you, that God will teach you not to sin by praying for me. Amen. God bless you. As we, the, open, the altar is open. Our dear Lord and our God, you knew what we needed and you have given us that which will take us to heaven. We are asking, O oh Lord, this morning, as we heard in this sermon, that the beginning of this commitment is the salvation of our soul. Lord, if there be any here today that is yet to know you as their personal Lord and Savior, Lord, please reveal yourself to them. As we bow our knees and our heads before you and pray unto you, and we open our hearts unto you, Lord, please come down. Amen. Visit us, O Lord God. Amen. Bless us greatly today. Amen. Grant us that spirit of commitment, O God, Amen. so that we will serve you in truth and in righteousness all the days of our lives. Amen. Thank you because you know you have answered. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen.